have so many court cases and right now even as we speak you're in court with capital market authority why are you in court and why do you guys have so many court cases <laughs> lynn that's also a perception that we have so many court cases how many court cases do let, you have? Let, let me let me unpack it for you yes please remember when we started from our previous employer uh, we were accused, you know, these people have stolen billions of shillings. Mm -hmm. you know, there's an audit that has been done by uh, an accounting firm called KPMG and a legal firm called Coulson Honey. And it has found that these people are culpable and therefore we are taking them to court. And it was all over the, all over the news, both mainstream, social media. And, you know, sometimes you have to give things time to, to play out. Mm -hmm. Now... That particular case was really meant to make sure that we don't start as a brand. We banded together four individuals from our previous employer and decided that we want to start a new brand. And the core strategy would be to borrow directly from individuals and put the money into well-researched real estate. Then we saw this um, these, uh, noise that these people have stolen money. Now, of course, we went to court and said, OK, if there is an audit report that says that uh, we've stolen money, why can't you disclose that audit report so that uh, people can take a look at it? We litigated over a three-year period. We have a court ruling, a judgment by Justice Muita that compels our previous employer to produce these reports uh, from KPMG and from Coulson Honey. I think the judgment was delivered in February 2019. It's almost 18 months later. They are still in defiance of that court order. So the public can conclude for itself whether there was any wrongdoing or not. Because for us, we are saying, if there was an audit, disclose it. Let people see. These are the allegations that were being made. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing. The only thing I can say is our previous employer, up to today, is still in contempt of a court order to mm -hmm. produce the so-called audits. Mm -hmm. It is, I think... Um, the difference between first world and third world is nothing other than culture and mentality. In the first world, if a team gets together and you feel that they have some knowledge or they have some capability that you'd rather participate in, what you do is that you buy a stake in their company or you, you reach some sort of arrangement. In the third world, when such a thing happens, what you do is that you try to bring them down with rumors, with you try to bog them, them down in court, you try everything that you can to disrupt them. That's the difference between the first world and third world. It is, it is not IQ, it's not mentality, it is how we do things. Mm -hmm. So I can assure you there's nothing uh, in, in those, those particular court cases other than politics. And it's been seven years. If there was any wrongdoing, by now we should have been charged in court and been arraigned in some some court. Mm -hmm. It's never happened. Yeah. yeah. So that's the previous employer uh -huh. part of it. Yeah. Come to CMA. We only go to court just as we did with our previous employer to defend ourselves and the interests of our clients. If you take, um, if you take the court matter that we had in December of 2019, CMA wrote to us and essentially said, look, um, Stop onboarding new clients into your money market fund because you have no trustee. Now, we read the regulations. Regulation 26.1 of the Collective Investment Schemes Regulation says a trustee is not entitled to resign until a new trustee is appointed. You can go read it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So we asked ourselves, okay, the way the regulations are set is such that there can never be a vacuum. And even if there was a vacuum, to send us a letter on the 23rd of December saying on board a new trustee by January, that gives us only four business days because the rest are holidays, mm -hmm. it's not possible. So we asked ourselves, it looks like this letter is designed to disable our business or to jeopardize this money market fund business. So we had discussions with the regulator trying to tell them give us more time, mm -hmm. they refused, so we had to go to court to protect our business. And the court gave a stay order against their directive. Mm -hmm. Then we litigated this particular letter, and in, um, on October 14th, 
the court ruled that this particular letter was unlawful and it, the letter was set aside uh, permanently. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we were left with no option but to, to go to court again. You can go read the ruling by yourself. We are very open and transparent, transparent firm. Mm -hmm. We've actually published the ruling online so that the general public can read it and conclude um, was there a case here or not. So that was the first time we went to court against CMA. The second time was uh, recently they wrote to us a letter saying, this fund of yours that borrows directly from investors, the regulated one, because there's the unregulated mm -hmm. site on high yield solutions, and there's the regulated site on high yield funds, essentially say this fund of yours can only invest a maximum of 10% into your own real estate projects. Now, that was kind of surprising. We said, but before we formed this fund, ourselves and the regulator agreed on what the fund would do. And the documents were very clear. The fund would invest only on site on projects. Mm -hmm. Now that we've operated the fund for almost a year, you can't then come and say, I've changed my mind. Arbitrarily, I've changed my mind. You can't invest in, in site on projects. And even if you are going to change your mind, mm -hmm call a meeting, let's discuss, and agree the transition. But you cannot reach to a regulation that doesn't apply to the fund and try to use it to destabilize the fund. And what do I mean? There's a regulation there, again, you can read it for yourself, uh, Collective Investment Regulation 16.2. And when you form a fund, it has three main players to protect the investors. The fund manager who makes investment decisions, there's the trustee who oversees, his, he's like, the trustee is like the prefect for the fund, and there's custodian who holds the money. Now, that regulation says where the fund manager, the trustee, and the custodian are all under one brand, then that fund can only invest a maximum of 10% in in-house projects. And for obvious reasons, the governance structure, if all are under one person, then you could argue that the governance structure is weakened and therefore to protect investors, limit how much the fund can put in in-house projects. Mm -hmm. But in the case of CHYF, the trustee is National Bank. The fund manager is Siton Asset Managers. The custodian is SBM Bank Kenya. These three are not owned by the same person. They are not related in any way, shape mm -hmm. or form mm -hmm. and therefore Regulation 16 cannot then apply to CHYF. Mm -hmm. So what we did was to go to court to ask the judge, look, we've gotten this letter from this regulator. We don't think it applies to this fund. This fund is supposed to invest purely on our own, purely into our own in-house well-researched projects. Now the regulator is telling us to limit it to 10% and go invest the balance of 90% outside. That's, that was not the deal with investors. Once again, the court looked at our application, temporarily set aside that letter that was written to us by CMA, and now we are litigating and we are confident. You can go read that regulation for yourself. Mm -hmm. Just as the December 2019 letter was set aside, this will also be set aside because it is so night, the issue is so night and day. And when we go to court, we don't go to court on issues that are gray. It has to be black and white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are the only key court cases that we have. Yeah, so it's yeah. not like you guys, you're always in and out of court. No, it is, that is the perception. I, yeah. And I don't know what the intention, yeah. but we are very uh, reluctant litigants. That means we only go to court when we are left with no choice. And again, there's nothing wrong with going to court. We are a democracy. Yes. If you and I can't agree on an issue, let's go to court. Let's go to court. And it does not have to be adversarial. Yes. We will just and sit and say, we will mm. just sit and say, okay, Edwin and Lynn, you guys don't seem to agree. If you don't agree, the issue of interpretation is a preserve of the judiciary. So let's go to the judiciary and let them tell us what uh, Regulation 16.2 actually means? Is it applicable to this fund? Mm -hmm. Somehow I still feel our, our capital markets are where the political space used to be 20 years ago, where what, um, you know, Kanu was Baba and Mama, what it said was law, it didn't matter what the laws said. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel that um, the, the capital markets regulatory framework, and don't get me wrong, 
I have a lot of respect for regulators. Okay. I've dealt with uh, RBA, uh, they regulate our pension funds. Okay. We've dealt with CBK, we have an application before them. Okay. Excellent professional, we got our license from RBA, I never even had to go there in terms of lobbying or seeing people. Here is the process, here is the application, here is the checklist, you yeah. meet the requirements, you go through the process, you get your license. Exactly. But somehow, when it comes to capital markets, it is a very arbitrary, capricious process. Um, you look at the letters coming from the authority versus the law, they don't even connect. Mm -hmm. So quite frankly, I think there is something with our capital markets. Mm -hmm.